Hi, we're going to uh, go over section 10.3 in your notes today, and we're talking about regression. So uh, we've talked a little bit about this in class the last time you were um, in class, and today we're going to be dealing with this example uh, for the first part of the lecture. So we have two variables, speed of the golf club and distance the ball travels. And so we have a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight observations. Uh, each observation, the speed of the golf head was recorded, and then the distance that the golf ball went, I believe that's in yards, was also recorded. And so we expect there to be some association or relationship between speed and distance. We would expect that as the speed increases, so would the distance, so that would be a positive association. Okay, so we're going to go down to page 38 of the notes. You should have covered most of this stuff um, in class. That's why we're starting on page 38, which is section 10.3. Uh, All right, so when we know we have two variables and uh, we want to fit what we call a regression equation or a line to the data, we have what we call a response variable. That's the variable y, and that's the variable we're trying to predict. And the explanatory variable is the variable that in some sense explains the value for the y variable. And so for our example, we can look at the scatter plot, and we have a uh, speed down here on the x-axis and distance on the y. Those are a little hard to read. And we can see there's a positive association. As one variable, as speed increases, so does distance. So we have a positive association. It looks to be linear, meaning it follows a straight line. And it makes sense that speed is the explanatory variable. And distance is the uh, response variable. And that's because the speed has something to do with how far the ball will travel. So speed explains the distance that the golf ball travels. And so we always put the explanatory variable on the x-axis, as we saw with that scatter diagram. And we put the uh, response variable on the y-axis. Y-axis. Okay, so the idea with linear regression is if we see that two variables have a linear association, then we might want to describe that by using the equation of a line. So we could see that as one variable increases, so does the other. So I could kind of imagine fitting a line through there uh, that goes fairly close to all the observations. This line has a positive slope because it increases from left to right. We expect the correlation coefficient to be fairly high, close to 1. And if we can draw a line through our data, that means there's some function that represents the association between speed and distance. We could use the line to make a prediction for distance. Suppose that we had a speed of 104. Well, we have no observations at 104. But we could use the line still to make a prediction. So here's 104. And we might want to see where that brings us on the y-axis. So it looks like about 272 would be the predicted distance for a golf ball that had a golf club that has a speed of 104. So we need to know the equation of this line to make that prediction. It's not um, appropriate just to eyeball it with the scatter diagram. Okay, so we're only going to use technology to get the um, equation of the line. You could do it by hand. That's a little tedious and not necessary. So we're going to either um, use our calculator or StatCrunch to uh, get the equation of the line. And I'll show you how to do both. So here are our data. We have paired observations, eight observations total. And so we'll do it on the calculator first. What I want to do first is enter the data. So I go to stat and then uh, edit. So I hit enter here. Pull 
this up a little bit more. And then I've already entered the data, but what you want to do is you want to enter the x variable into L1 and then the y variable into L2. So that's how you would do that, x into L1, y into L2. Then I go back to stat, then I go to calculate. Now I want to go, I could go to number 4, but let's go to number 8. Let's scroll down till I get to 8. Oops. And the, uh, L and I means linear, REG means regression, so this is linear regression. Just means we're going to fit a line to the data. And then the first number will be the y-intercept, and the second number they give will be the slope. The slope's always the variable in front of x. And I just hit enter twice. And so it gives me the slope, which is 3.166, and it gives me the y-intercept. Now I have to go and write that as an equation of the line. So you should have some recognition from uh, algebra how to do that. So y is equal to mx plus b idea. We have a slope and a y-intercept. So I'm going to write uh, y hat. It doesn't matter which one I write first. I'm going to do the y-intercept. So the y-intercept was 55.8. Plus uh, 3.17 times x. So x is equal to speed, y hat is equal to distance, and we have the hat or the caret sign above the hat because we're making a prediction. Okay, so these are our observed values for y, these are our predicted values right here. So once we come up with the equation of the line, that's just the equation that represents this line right here, we can use that line to make a prediction for x. So suppose we wanted to make a prediction for a club head of a speed of 103. So that means since speed is our uh, explanatory variable, uh, x is equal to 103. And we want to make a prediction. We want to figure out what y hat's equal to. So all I do is substitute 103 into this equation right here. So I have negative 55.8 plus 3.17, that's our slope, times 103. That's the value we're trying to make a prediction for. And this gives us 270. 0.71, and our units are our yards. Okay, so that's our prediction. Every prediction, well not every prediction, but if we had an observed value for 103, that would be in our table up here. So I could go up here, we did have an observed observation at 103. This is our value for x, and this is our observed value for y. So our observed value is 274. Our predicted value was 270.71, so off by a little bit. The error that we get by making a prediction, so how far is this off from the observed value, is called the residual. And that's the distance from the line to the observed value. Our observed value is 274. I'll just make note of that. Oops. Uh, come on. So observed value. And each observed value has a predicted value, and that's 271. To get the residual, the residual is just like the error how far you're off when how far the line is off from the observed value. We take y, which is observed, minus the predicted. So observed comes from the data, that was 274, minus the, uh, the predicted, which is 270.71.
and that's equal to 3.29 and those units are yards as well okay so let me just demonstrate that in StatCrunch so StatCrunch I've entered the data into two columns as well I can go to stat regression and simple linear and I put my value for x, our explanatory value, which is speed, and our y variable is distance, and then all I need to do is hit calculate. It gives me some output, not all of which um, we need, but here is the equation of the line, just like we wrote, except we have distance and speed instead of y and x. Uh, here's the correlation coefficient, close to 1. And down here, we also have uh, estimates of the intercept, which is right here, and the slope. So if you don't have a TI calculator, um, all you need to do is enter the data into StatCrunch, into two columns, and then uh, go through the uh, process I just did. And we'll also be doing this with larger data sets as well, so everyone will be using StatCrunch.